here today because um, we don't want pr provocation to war. We don't want prov don't provocation. Want and, and Taiwan is a part of China, and many people don't realize that Hong Kong is a part of China, Tibet is a part of China, and for years people have been trying to split up China, and it, it just won't work. And to think that Pelosi wants democracy as if, as if we had it here, which we don't, and uh, no, freedom, and, and the headlines in the Mercury today said she's going to democratize the whole area, the whole Indo-Pacific area. Um, and you know, it, it's part of the American uh, lie with the American dream that we're that we're free. <laughs> that we're free here. It just. My name is Satania Tam. Why? What, what's going on? Why am I here? Because I do not want to have a war between China and U.S. I want peace. And Nancy is really provoking the um, the tension between these two countries. And she has no gain. She's for herself. This is no purpose. She's going to be out anyway, very soon, in a few months. What is she doing here? Nothing. Except for her own benefits. Probably money, probably glory, probably just want to prestige, to show her power. There's no purpose, no reason to provoke China and tension between these two countries. But the, the Democrats and Republicans both support uh, expansion of military war in Asia, or the Asian pivot. Why? I mean, it seems like they're united to uh, militarize and uh, surround China and Russia. Well, the thing is that U.S. is a very, very aggressive. They want to dominate the world. They want the benefit. They don't want. They, they want to be the the superpower in the whole world and not letting any other countries to support themselves, be strong and to be competitive of them. Of them, they are the war. They are the. They are the. They provoke wars. They invade anybody else. China never invade any other countries. They want to develop themselves. They want to help the other smaller countries. That's all. Then why? China never has any militaries in the U.S. coast. Then why is what China, what U.S. has to do in South China Sea? Well, isn't that part of U.S. imperialism? Yes, definitely U.S. imperialism. Definitely, yes. In history, they always have. They want to colonize anywhere. They want Didn't they colonize China at one time? Well, they want to. I mean, they were they were in China. They were military. Yes. British, French yes. were had. They cannot do it. They colonize Philippines, the, all the other smaller countries. And when China developed like this, they don't like it because, of course, the the world is only one world. Resources are limited. They don't want. They don't want to dominate. Dominate everything. They don't want to share any wealth, any resources. So there's a large Chinese community in San Francisco. Yes. And it would be affected by a war. Their anti-Asian attacks on Chinese. Um, why isn't there a political alternative to Pelosi? Because it seems like she has the majority of support, even in the Chinese community. I don't think so. I don't think she has a lot of the support from the Chinese community. She covers herself very well. There are certain things she's very helpful to the Chinese community, but the minority is that she's anti-mainland China. She's anti-Chinese. It's long history like that. And she's in the position for a long time, and most of the San Francisco people are Democrats. So it's very, very difficult to, to, to kick her out. Co-founder of Pivot to Peace. I'm also a San Francisco native, born and raised here, so I understand the issues that we're facing, and I understand what this war will do to us in the U.S. and to the Chinese American community. And we're not going to have it anymore. So that's why I have the honor of introducing this program of people who stand on the side of peace, people who represent the San Francisco community. It is an honor to start off our program with retired Superior Court judge and my co-founder of Pivot to Peace, Julie Tang. I'm going to say a few words in Chinese, then I'm going to revert to English. Uh, 
只有係喺度篤中國啲眼，啲啲西嗰啲西人報紙咁話，咁有咩作用呢？可能為佢自己嘅政治生涯有作用啦，但係對我哋啲小市民嚟講，係剝削剝奪我哋嘅安全。剥夺我哋应该得到嘅和平。我哋而家嗰啲，我哋佢哋话支持台湾吗？我哋系好支持台湾噶。我哋支持台湾人安全，支持台湾人民嘅安全。而讲台普洛西去台湾，就系、是、就系将啲台湾人民咧剥夺佢哋嘅安全。我哋唔赞成，你话系咪啊？咁我哋咧，我而家就想讲几句英文 ，OK？ 好、so,。
issues, homelessness, monkeypox, and all those issues that are killing our people. So join me and say, May go one to Taiwan.
that our claims, the false claims that Russia and China are existential threats, let me clarify that the word existential means, or means, ex means that their mere existence is declared a threat by the United States. By taking that position, we make war inevitable because we are pushing up against them again and again and continually escalating. Now you see that we in fact have a war going in Ukraine, a proxy war with Russia, and you see that we have high-level people in the Russian government warning about the dangers of nuclear war. Let me be a little more specific about what could happen with China. If we have a shooting incident between us and China over this visit to Taiwan, it doesn't matter who shoots first. What will happen is somebody will shoot somebody, we, the other side will retaliate, the other side will retaliate back. We have the carrier group, Ronald Reagan. It's a battle group with the carrier and a small fleet of ships around it sailing to the region right now. If they get in a shooting incident and it escalates, China has missiles which is capable of sinking our ships, including our aircraft carriers. If they were to do that, what do you think we would do? Are we going to escalate and hit China? And if so, is that going to keep escalating to the nuclear level? There are strategists in the United States talking about the use of tactical nuclear weapons to intimidate our enemies. But to China, a nuclear weapon is a nuclear weapon. So these are the dangers. I'd also like to recognize not only Ann Wright, but we have Lieutenant Colonel Roger Dong, former U.S. Air Force military intelligence specializing in China. He just said to me, in war, everybody loses. And that's what Nancy should think about. So please welcome Ann. Thank you. I hope you can 
hear me with this on. I wanted to wear it because I'm very proud of this mask. It was given to me at the beginning of the pandemic by my friends in Taiwan. I've spent many wonderful years in Taiwan. I have many wonderful friends there. I love them very dearly. I also have friends elsewhere in the region. And I don't want them to be, to be at risk by this visit. And that's why I'm saying to Mrs. Pelosi, do not go to Taiwan. We here in San Francisco are facing another long, intense, and, and dangerous fire season. Scientists estimate that breathing the smoke of recent fires has already shortened the lifespan of Californians by one to two years. Not to mention the lives upended and ended by these terrible conflagrations. Your flight to Taiwan, accompanied by fighter jets and a naval escort, will pour untold tons of CO2 into the atmosphere, further worsening the prospects for a livable future for future generations. And that's assuming your visit does not ignite a nuclear holocaust that will destroy us in a matter of minutes. Mrs. Pelosi, you have work to do at home. In San Francisco, people are suffering mightily. We need you to address the existential threats, climate change, democracy, livelihoods, the very fabric of our multicultural society is at risk. The people of Taiwan will not benefit from your visit either. They will, along with the people of the region, will be at risk for more violent conflict. It will be much harder to resolve the problems there with your visit. So please come home. Take care of business here. And let me say a little bit in Chinese. David Ewing was a local president of the U.S.-China Friendship Association. This is actually the 50th year of the founding of the U.S.-China People Friendship Association in San Francisco. And during all those decades, you know, we've had some ups and downs in terms of our relationship with China. But this is, I think, one of the more dangerous moments. Uh, China has always sought peace and friendship with the American people. And um, this kind of the reckless actions of the U.S. in the last year or two years, the challenges to um, uh, Chinese territories uh, in the Pacific, and now more direct U.S. intervention in Taiwan. Um, the Nancy, Congressman Nancy Pelosi trip, is, uh, if she does it, it's a very reckless, adventuresome thing. Uh, it's a kind of, because we can't predict what the results of such aggression by the U.S. will be, it's, um, it's an unknown danger. So, uh, in diplomacy, people don't like to have unknown dangers like this. And we don't know what the Americans are likely to do there. And of course, we don't know what China will have to do to defend itself. Uh, but I think it's important for us to recognize if this trip goes forward, and if there really is a confrontation between China and the U.S., it is the Chinese government and the Chinese people that is fighting for peace. They're the ones who are trying to stop the war. And whatever happens as a result of this confrontation, I'll be supporting China. I hope you will be too. I'd like to introduce Sabina Wildman from the Answer Coalition. She is born and raised here in San Francisco.
Nancy Pelosi's trip is not the first she's taken recently. Several weeks back, she was in Ukraine. Why was Nancy Pelosi in Ukraine, which is being devastated by war? She was there for one purpose only, to egg on that war, to get the Ukrainians to continue to fight in what is a proxy war for the United States against, against Russia to bring Russia down. And that is being conducted until the last Ukrainian will die. And that's the kind of death and destruction Nancy Pelosi was bringing to Ukraine. Now she's in Taiwan. Why is she in Taiwan? She's there to gin up a proxy war by the United States and China to bring China down. Justice, and why is that? Why would, why, why would the United States want to bring China down? China's on the other side of the world. As other people have said here, China's not our enemy. It tries to be friendly with us at every turn. Why? Why? There's only one reason, and it's the same reason why we have had death and destruction in the last 20 years of war. As a matter of fact, it's the same reason why we've had continuous wars since the Second World War when the United States has been more or less in charge. Korea, Vietnam, Libya, Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, now Ukraine, you name it, the United States is out there with war. Why? Because we say we must be number one in the world and no one can get to challenge that. Now you may ask, why should that be the case? It shouldn't. It's lunacy. It's power-made, power-mad craziness. So we have to stop this, and especially in the case of China, because China is already number one. Since 2017, China has had the biggest GDP by PPP metrics in the world. The United States has already slipped. The United States is slipping. The United States is scared. What can it do to somebody who's already outstripped it? Bring it down. That's the plan. And bringing that down means impoverishing, immiserating 1.4 billion people. That's our plan. That's what we will do to be number one. So I think we've got to stop this rule of the United of the world by the United States. No more number one. We will fight against number one. We will fight for a world that is multipolar, a world that is shared, it is a world that is jointly governed. No more number one. Fight number one. Fight for a multipolar, shared, peaceful, and prosperous world. Thank you. I'm uh, Julie Tang. I'm a retired judge from San Francisco, and I'm also a co-founder of Pivot to Peace. And what's going on here today? Uh, we're staging a, a protest against Nancy Pelosi's uh, uninvited trip to Taiwan, which is going to uh, create some big trouble for us, uh, both in the South Sea, across the Straits, and in America. We Chinese American community is particularly concerned because we have already suffered so much from the pandemic, from Trump's uh, trade war in 2018. We've suffered murder, assaults, uh, all kinds of harm done to us. We don't need another dangerous move by our leaders to push us close to war with China that could create even more problems back home. We want Nancy to reset her priorities and pay attention to the domestic situation of the uh, COVID, the monkeypox, and inflation, climate change, rather than go over there and create international interference in other countries' sovereignty. And most of all, we want her to stop her aggressive tactics and Cold War tactics against China, confrontation towards China. And it seems like the Republicans, the Trump supporters, are supporting her today. I think they're setting a trap for her. I hate to say that. They are setting a huge trap for her and, and help her step into a no-win situation. And then they, if she does not succeed, they're going to criticize her. And if she succeeds, then they will just take it for their own credit. The, both presidents, Biden and Trump, 
does not want it to go. And you read all the mainstream media op-eds as well as independent press, they all advise her not to go. It's almost unanimous. And the people certainly don't want any creations of war and violence. We want peace and prosperity. Can she deliver that instead? Or is she going to continue to deliver war and, 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 and horrible things to this country and to the world? It seems like the Democrats and Republicans have a bipartisan policy of increasing the military budget for this Asian pivot to surround China. Why uh, Why are they doing those things? Is it because they make money for the war machine or what's what's going on? Well, there are several big power in this country that have been driving the policies since um, uh, since 1990, uh, during the Clinton days, uh, the, the, the neocons had tried to um, assert hegemony, uh, assert dominance over the world, and start creating uh, wars uh, so that uh, we, we can start color revolutions against regimes that do not uh, conform to our policies. And they have done, done so. They did not do so well under Clinton, but under George Bush, they were able to start the war against Iraq under false pretenses. That and was, we're bringing democracy to Iraq, weren't we? Uh, not that I know of, okay. And then we started war in Libya, in, in, in Syria, in, um, in Afghanistan. We have killed millions of Muslims, and now they want to go kill Chinese. Uh, we need to stop that. And China is not one of these small Muslim countries that you can just roll over, where people fight American missiles with the sand, in sandals. Uh, the, the, this is a nuclear country. They're, and a very form, form, uh, uh, formidable country. And they do mean business when it comes to Taiwan. This is their red line. They will use all power that they have to protect Taiwan. Why do we want to get into that? We have so many issues here. Can the, we, home, the homeless right here, no, mentally no. ill, education, closing schools. And, and the inflation, uh, it, it is estimated that each American would be spending $6,000 more a year on, consumer, on, on the consumer spending because of the inflation. And recession is right around the corner. Can we fix our own problem? Can we fix our own human rights problem in the streets, the homeless, the drugs, and uh, the, the, the assault and, and violence against Asian Americans? These are all fundamental human rights issues that we need to take care of in our country first and foremost. And uh, Congresswoman Pelosi and the Democrats and Republicans have been pushing Japan to remilitarize to get rid of Article 9. Uh, Abe was supporting militarization, nuclear weapons in Japan, denialism of the crimes of uh, uh, the Japanese Imperial Army during the Second World War. Why is the United States government supporting remilitarization of Japan? This is again part of the hegemony um, uh, endeavor uh, that we want to keep our number one status uh, uh, and they're afraid of China's uh, quiet rise and a, a peaceful rise, and so they they needed to um, pull Japan into uh, this very, very much of a warmongering uh, uh, atmosphere. So um, Japan, unfortunately, under Abe is uh, the more Trump than Trump. Okay. And so, uh, and, and, and we, we, and Japan still has a lot of issues in Asia that are unfinished business, like the failure to admit to their atrocities that are committed, uh, failure to acknowledge that peace is more important, and, and they fought the, the same government that is now leading Japan is a government that took over during Second World War. It's an authoritarian country. There's no democracy there. It's, it's really a bunch of bullshit. And the people in Japan don't want that either. They want peace. If, at, at the last poll that I understand, they don't want that amendment change. They want, because throughout since Second World War, not one Japanese per soldier or person had been killed on, on account of war. They want to, or maybe very few, they want to keep it like that. And I support the Japanese people who seek peace.